So the purpose of uh, this meeting is to explain our proposed uh, marijuana establishment and to address questions and concerns, uh, particularly as pertains to the impact of the establishment on the community, including uh, environmental and nuisance impacts. Um, we are also seeking constructive input, dialogue, and just general commentary from the community regarding our business plans. Um, We'll see. Uh, I may, if, if there's a lot of commentary, maybe we can have someone be a, a moderator for, for the meeting. Um, but it seems like this is a pretty, a relatively small group, so I can probably just, we can just go back and forth. Um, so, my name is Philip, Philip Bowden. I'm Leah Bowden. Uh, we moved to Conway about a year ago. Um, with the hope of uh, setting up a farm and uh, being close to my parents who are in Housatonic, uh, Great Barrington, as well as looking for um, adjunct <laughs> professor employment in the five colleges. Um, so that's why we're here. We're excited um, to be part of this community. Um, we've had a really positive experience here so far, and we hope that we can... Um, be part of um, be part of this community and, and contribute positively as well. Um, so I think the first thing that um, I'd like to do is just a, a quick read through of the um, of our draft application proposal. Um, I didn't print out that many because it's a pretty long document, but. Um, It'll just go over the layout of the farm. There's some pictures, things like that. Um, people can get acquainted with the cultivation and the manufacturing process, because I think sometimes these things can be a little scare, scary uh, until you know exactly what's going on. So it'll be a little bit of a, a window into the <coughs> production process. Um, and then uh, after that, I'm going to highlight uh, key points that were mandated to address by both the town and by the Cannabis Control Commission. Uh, after that, after we highlighted kind of like the areas that hopefully we can focus the, the conversation on, then we'll just open it up and talk about it. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we are proposing an organic outdoor cultivation um, with up to 10,000 square feet uh, of greenhouse cultivation. Uh, that's contingent and dependent on a lot of factors, uh, mostly the planning board, um, conservation commission, things like that. Um, and as well as solventless manufacture. Uh, solventless manufacture essentially means the production of hashish, uh, rosin pressing, uh, very kind of low-tech ways of creating um, natural kind of extracts. Um, the location is 1230 Main Poland Road. Uh, I think it's a location many of you in the town will be familiar with. Um, it's been a farm in the past. Uh, the Procopies lived there. Uh, Ronald Procopie uh, had an apple orchard and did integrative pest control kind of um, experiments, uh, a bit of a living legend, or not living anymore, did he pass away? Yeah. He did yeah. a while ago, right? But uh, a legend in the field. Uh, and then it was a, a small farm with um, sheep and donkeys and livestock. And then we purchased it from Elise Reimer. Uh, and she had maintained a vineyard and maintained kind of the hay fields there. Um, and now, now it's us. Um, Yes, it's us and our sheep. Can I ask you um, a question? Yeah. Uh, solventless. Yeah. What does that mean? So there's a there's a lot of different ways to make uh, extracts from mar marijuana, and some of them involve um, things like uh, butane, uh, more which kind would of be a solvent? which would be a solvent, okay. right? Uh, solventless is kind of the industry standard should be the cleanest uh, way to do so this. So more organic? Sure. Correct. Okay. Um, all natural would be another kind of term. Thank 
that's a kind of meaningless term in a way. But yes. Thank you. Um, so um, the intent of, of, of our business is to supply recreational marijuana to retail stores as well as other manufacturers. Um, and we're, we're going to kind of target ourselves towards a niche market for high quality, organically grown, and minimally processed cannabis products. Um, we're going to utilize low impact organic farming practices to minimize disturbances to the surrounding wildlife and ecosystem. For those of you who are familiar with the area, um, it's quite a pristine environment. Uh, and we really respect that and want to do our best to have a uh, business plan that's in line with that. Um, the outdoor cultivation will primarily, primarily supply product to our manufacturing business. In other words, we don't really anticipate in this climate um, an, ab an ability to be that successful competing with uh, flower product, except for in our greenhouses. Um, so most of, the, most of the product will feed into the manufacturing. Um, <clears throat> Solventless manufacture is a growing part of the cannabis industry. The simplicity and safety of the equipment is ideal for smaller cultivation operations and connoisseurs and other manufacturers. Manufacturers value their finished products for their rich and flavorful terpene content. Uh, the things that we're like looking to make, uh, as I said, would include bubble hash, rosin, and live resin. Live resin is a product that's made from flash frozen. Uh, marijuana uh, uh, Next, uh, if, for those who have the document or want to share, there's a site plan overview, uh, a map of the surroundings where you can see that um, one of the unique aspects of this property is that we don't have uh, residents uh, abutting the property. Uh, the closest residents are about 1,700 to 1,800 feet away, um, and I'll deal more with, <coughs> with the sighting momentarily. Um, There's somebody that close? <laughs> <laughs> 1,700 feet? I believe but so. It's like down a ravine, there's a river, and then it's back up another one. Yes. Yeah. Actually, just like the, the way a crow would fly. I, I, no. no, I figured it was like at least a quarter of a mile. Oh, <laughs> oh no, maybe, I mean, maybe meters. Or yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's about a third of a mile. Yeah, yeah. that's seventeen hundred feet. Okay, thank you. Oh, it is good. <laughs> Just up to five thousand. Up to real Yeah, come on. I grew well, up in Canada. I still get confused. Oh, yeah. Third of a mile. <laughs> okay. Third of a mile. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So the we're gonna put a perimeter <clears throat> fence and privacy screenings uh, up. Um, around the entire property. Uh, the fencing is actually going to be dual purpose uh, because we are planning on trying to maintain a low impact uh, agricultural operation in addition to the, the marijuana cultivation. Um, we'll have no trespassing signs posted around the perimeter. Um, areas near the, the main Poland road uh, can have additional height and privacy screening as needed. Uh, where practicable, practicable trees will be planted as a buffer in addition to the fence line. Um, but we're also going to elevate, make sure that the fence line is elevated to allow wildlife to, to pass uh, in and out. Uh, the cultivation area fencing, uh, this, that's going to be for the main, the grow, kind of grow area. That's separate. That's going to be a, a significantly more robust. Uh, the area that we're going to um, proposed to fence in is about 100,000 square feet. That's not the canopy size that we're looking to start out with, but I think it's practical to start with that and to have that will allow us flexibility to um, move things around as needed. Uh, the security, uh, we're going to have uh, six foot tall field fencing, privacy screening, padlock gates, solar powered security cameras. All of this is kind of uh, mandated by the state. Um, as well as the bylaw. Uh, I put the information in there just so people can get a sense for um, how robust the security um, parameters 
kind of are. Uh, as much as possible, we'd like the to, to use field fencing to conform to a rural kind of farm aesthetic. Uh, and we kind of feel like the buffer with the, with the sheep and the livestock grazing around it is going to create quite a, an attractive layout. Um, then there's the private residence. Uh, the residence kind of overlooks the cultivation area, which is good. It'll have pretty much 24-hour surveillance uh, from, from us. Um, we're gonna, going to propose that uh, there's a house uh, addition. We're going to propose that we um, separate that from the main residence and use that as kind of our headquarters for manufacturing, processing, um, things like that. The idea behind kind of using the existing structures, uh, even though it may in some cases be more expensive for us, is that we think that it's more attractive to the community uh, to try and maintain as much as possible. The Would it be the pottery studio? What? The former no. pottery studio? Or? No, not that. Is there another no. structure? The ha within the house. Oh, within, within the, the house. house. You want to see? Okay. Okay. Um, but again, to re just to to remind everybody, all of this stuff is maybe not completely in our hands. It depends a lot on what the planning board uh, wants to see, uh, as well as the CCC. Uh, but it's our feeling that because our manufacturing is so low tech and, and basic, that it won't pose any concerns. Um, There'll be a garage that we may turn into a propagation room. Uh, there's not that much to talk about there. A propagation room just contains some fluorescent and LED lighting. It's kind of a sealed off environment. It doesn't really produce much odor. You can scrub that odor out with carbon filters. Um, the plants won't be in flower anyways. Then we have our barns. We would love for the opportunity to renovate and repair them. Uh, we will see how that goes with the town, but that's, that's our dream, is to really be able to fix them up nicely. Um, our current uses are just for livestock, hay, storage kind of stuff. Um, but ultimately, it would be nice if we could turn over, kind of have a streamlined manufacturing production kind of facility all within the barns and get our addition back so we can have friends stay. Things like that. How many barns are there? There's two. two. They're kind of like right up against each other. Okay. Um, then there's putting in an agricultural well and water storage. There's a lot of water resources on the property. Uh, we recently had someone looking at our well who seemed to think that we probably wouldn't even need to dig an additional well. Um, that was a licensed uh, home inspector. That so, um, yeah, maybe an agricultural well, a couple <coughs> storage tanks to hold the water, um, and then we'll get to that leap later, but there's a, um, a page on water resource management things like runoff. Um, like I mentioned, around the whole property, there's going to be low intensity, low intensity farming and open space. Uh, the forest edges, fence lines, and backfield will be maintained by our small flock of sheep and free-range poultry. Rotational grazing practices will be used to prevent overgrazing to control invasive species, which is actually a problem for wildlife management in that area, uh, and to improve the soil quality. Uh, we're also going to maintain and improve upon the existing orchards. Uh, there's a pond. I'd like to put a solar-powered pump in there to oxygenate the water and use it as a livestock watering hole. It's not that relevant. Uh, as well as we're going to reserve an area for a possible future solar build so that we can further mitigate uh, our environmental impact. 
um, storage, curing, and propagation rooms. Uh, initially, to get the project off the ground, we're proposing putting three shipping containers uh, and using climate, con uh, making them each kind of independent climate controlled facilities. Um, they'll have <clears throat> all of the mandated security controls, um, odor controls as needed. They won't be visible from the road as well. So for people who might have issues um, with the attractiveness of storage containers, um, when there's best addressed later in this. Um, then there is going to be a, a small hoop house, an additional outdoor grow area for our um, kind of vegetative growth. So there's kind of three stages of marijuana cultivation. The first is propagation indoors, cloning, seeds, things like that, where you preserve your genetics. Uh, you want a very, very controlled environment for that. Then you can put them into greenhouses or outdoors with some supplemental lighting to control the light cycle. They grow, they grow, they grow, and then when you're ready to flower them, they get moved to their final kind of location. Um, so we have an area that we'd like to use primarily for the vegetative growth. That's actually the area that's <coughs> closest to the road. Um, so our feeling is the plants will be smaller, uh, there will be less odor. Then we're going to propose some um, pretty substantial gutter-connected greenhouses. Uh, that's for a more high-ended high -end kind of flower product that wouldn't really feed into the manufacturing so much. Um, we're going to need uh, to have a lot of dialogue with the town um, about the best siting for that, the appropriate size, and so on and so forth. Um, but at a minimum, we're, uh, I guess I can give an outline for what those greenhouses would be like. Uh, they'll use in-ground hydronically heated raised beds uh, which means that we don't need to put in a concrete foundation. We can just have a gravel foundation, uh, which would be a significant uh, environmental kind of mitigation, impact mitigation. Um, just like the outdoor, it's going to be all organic cultivation methods. Uh, we're going to use LED lighting to minimize energy consumption. Uh, these greenhouses uh, have automated blackout systems. So at sunset, they black out. If you want to have lighting in them, your lighting goes on. Nobody sees it. Doesn't affect um, the the night life cycle of wildlife at all. Um, again, for odor control with with these greenhouses, I think people are starting to really dial that in. There's a, a number of solutions on the market for that, including. Um, ionization, uh, which is really attractive to us because that also reduces uh, uh, mold and other kinds of um, diseases. Um, you can also do in-ground exhausting. We'll probably use a combination of those, those factors. Um, and as I'll keep coming back to the siting of the property, it's going to be a main feature that will be uh, odor impacts. <coughs> Um, the security for the greenhouses, uh, these are actually rigid greenhouses with polycarbonate siding. Um, so they're not, uh, they're a lot more robust. Again, that'll all be compliant with um, CMR 935. Uh, and the greenhouse will be engineering, uh, engineered stamp plans and customized to the town code. The outdoor cultivation area, we're targeting, hoping um, to, be, to have permission to have a canopy of around 35,000 square feet, which puts us in kind of a tier five positioning. Um, the town wants or is open to us doing more. That's something we can talk about. Less, we can also talk about. Um, <coughs> What else can I say about that? I think, I think I'll cover all the details in outdoor cultivation a bit later. Um, and then lastly, there's, there's a vineyard on the property. Uh, it has some of the best sun exposure. 
Uh, we're trying to preserve the vineyard just because we like it, uh, and our current plans don't really call for altering that, but uh, if the town um, has some issues with some of our other areas where we're going to cultivate, that's going to, we're just including it as a precaution within the cultivation. Okay, I think next is outdoor cultivation. Um, so like I said, the plants kind of start off indoors from seed or clone, then they move into the greenhouse or confined outdoor area for vegetative growth. And then prior to flowering, plants are transplanted plant to the final growth site. Um, there's a number of different kinds of outdoor cultivation practices. Um, briefly, uh, long season, which is the most traditional way of growing, where plants are started perhaps indoors in the late winter or, or early spring, and then they're brought outside to grow with the natural photo period until shorter days in August trigger flowering. Long season plants are quite large. They'd be planted for, uh, in 50 to 300 gallon grow bags, and I'll talk about the grow bags later. Um, but they're also kind of risky due to the unpredictable New England climate in the fall. We could get wiped out by a hur uh, hurricane or something like that pretty easily. Um, then there's what's called outdoor depths. Outdoor depths are simply plants that, when they're a little bit smaller and earlier in the season, they have a plastic tarp that's pulled over them. It's pretty labor intensive, um, but by artificially shortening the length of the day, um, you can get uh, a less risky and higher quality yield. Um, and then lastly, there's auto flowers. This is mostly used in climates even more north than um, ours. Uh, auto flowers kind of, they have an automatic kind of length of, of life where they go into their flower period, uh, flowering regardless of the photo period. Um, we're interested in experimenting with that, and I guess that's all say about that. Um, so the, um, the outdoor color cultivation uh, is going to use low impact organic methods uh, and the four most important components of our approach are going to include these fabric, fabric grow bags that I mentioned as well as organic media and locally sourced nutrients, uh, the application of organic pest control methods, and multi-zone drip irrigation. Uh, the fabric grow bags em eliminate the need for tilling and grading. You can kind of just place them anywhere. Um, the larger bags can even be placed on gentle <coughs> slopes, so you don't actually have to do any kind of um, tilling. Uh, it helps prevent nutrients from leaching into groundwater. Uh, it conserves grow media, so you don't have to amend the huge bed. You just have to amend your, your individual bags as you go. Um, they can be placed on pallets or other kind of raised surfaces or on black fabric if you need more heat. Um, and the plants can be easily moved, allowing for efficient manage management of canopy space. Um, Then using organic media and locally sourced nutrients is of course renewable, limits our carbon footprint. It's easily sourced from local farms uh, as well as gonna be produced on our farm as well. Um, and we'll have our own kind of proprietary blend of organic media and locally sourced nutrients. For pest control, there's a wide variety of uh, controls on the market, uh, methods include atomizers for better spray penetration. Oesco, uh, Oesco actually is a leading producer of um, pretty sophisticated uh, spray equipment and we've been talking to them about, about their um, equipment. Um, you can use essential oils and there's a lot of OMRI listed uh, sprays to deter, to deter pests. Um, We'll use proper pruning techniques, insect monitoring cards, uh, and the selection of pest and disease resistant strains. And if things get really bad, we can always throw up some insect. 
lastly, there's multi-zone drip irrigation. Multi-zone drip ir irrigation allows precise and direct application of water to each plant. Um, it also limits the risk of runoff. So multi-zone just means like we'll have different beds connected to the drip irrigation when we want to irrigate one, um, one area of the property. We'll turn that on. We won't irrigate the rest. There'll be no water going everywhere. Um, I guess lastly, let's just talk about the security uh, compliance. Uh, we'll have a fully integrated security system, which will have these sol uh, solar-powered low-light functioning uh, cameras. There'll be sensors with perimeter alarm uh, and solar-powered green perimeter lights. So you use green lighting because it doesn't trigger um, a, a reaction in the plants. Plants are green, they're not absorbing green light. Okay, so that takes care of the outdoor cultivation. Let's see. My presentation is actually a little bit out of order. What's what do I have next in? I'm missing pages that she has. Oh no, really? Oh, uh, I think we have the, the manufacturing and processing. That's what I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, we're going to locate our headquarters in the addition to the north of the primary residence. The addition is new with a finished interior, plumbing, and electric. The building is set back approximately 60 feet from the road and has adequate and safe parking, loading for delivery vehicles and other business needs. <clears throat> again, there's a lot in here about security. I don't think I need to go over this again. Um, but if people have questions, uh, we can address that. Uh, for odor control, uh, the processing and manufacture of marijuana requires that small amounts of plant material is temporarily removed from storage for purposes of trimming and solving this manufacture, such as hash making and rosin pressing. Uh, because these are time-sensitive operations conducted in a well-insulated indoor environment, bookended by the product being sto stored in airtight <coughs> containers, um, we don't really see this being much of an issue. Um, the operations plan, there's really not much that's going to go on in there. We'll trim and sort dried flour, package the dried flour, we'll make bubble hash, we'll press rosin or live resin, and we'll package our products. The, equip the equipment that we would have in there would include things like perhaps an ice, mach an ice machine, freezers, a pharmaceutical freeze dryer, a 20-gallon hash tumbler, uh, a pneumatic rosin press, and a 15-gallon electric air compressor, and maybe an automatic trimmer for the flowers. That's pretty much it. Um, and then upstairs we'll have an office that'll be used for administrative tasks as well as the secure storage of cash and receipts and packaged orders awaiting transport. Um, next is shipping containers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have three 40 by 8 foot shipping containers, one for storage, one for curing, and one for propagation. Again, there will be a lot of security with all of this, um, as well as odor controls. Uh, the um, shipping containers, we're planning on insulating them and then putting uh, wood paneling around the outside to make them more attractive in appearance. Um, I think most of this is detail beyond what needs to be gone into in this meeting. Um, but if there are questions about anything that's going on in the storage or the curing, curing uh, containers, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, but basically, one of the containers dries the weed, another of the containers stores the weed. Uh, and then we'll, we'd like to have one more container just uh, because 
it's good to have as much um, propagation space uh, as possible um, that's really environmentally sealed and protected because your genetics is, you know, that's your secret weapon. Um, Then, I guess, there's the water management. Uh, we may have to put in some drainage um, in, the, in the fields uh, or some berms on the hillside uh, abutting the cultivation area to assist in water <coughs> diversion. Um, we, because of our use of fabric throw bags, uh, we're pretty flexible uh, in getting feedback from the Conservation Commission and others and how they want to approach uh, us doing drainage in the land, uh, to, to our land. Um, water usage, uh, the, it's hard to find uh, data on exactly how much water would be used for cultivation. Um, I do cite an article here that kind of compares outdoor cultivation to um, corn and tomatoes, a similar amount of water usage. Uh, we'll about, look, we're targeting about three quarters, of an, three quarters of an acre, so if you just imagine that as three quarters of an acre of tomatoes or corn. Um, again, we're very sensitive to the question of uh, nutrient runoff. Uh, we think that by using slow-release organic nutrients and using grow bags that are elevated off of the ground, as well as the irrigation, we can uh, address any concerns that may, might pertain to, to runoff. Lastly, we have a wood turtle on our property, which is awesome. And we're going to do our best to work with uh, um, Mass Endangered Species Act to make sure that we protect the wood turtle. I've been in consultation already with the biologists. I've had very positive indications um, towards our plan. Um, it, it shows what we're going to do here. Um, it's not much different than what I've already described. Uh, they were clear that they wanted uh, us to allow the wood turtles access into the cultivation area by raising the fences up a little bit. Um, and to be careful with disturbing soil around nesting time because we don't want them to nest near where all the activity for cultivation is going to happen. Um, and lastly, uh, as I think is probably clear by this point, there's a really minimal use of machinery that will be for the operation of this uh, Okay, we made it. Uh, I didn't include the greenhouse plans per se. I think that'll be done with a, uh, a licensed contractor uh, and all of that kind of stuff will be taken care of by authorities much more uh, qualified than I am. Um, okay, so key points that are supposed to be addressed as mandated by the town and the CCC. I am getting tired of the sound of my own voice. Uh, location of the business, 1230 Main Poland Road, Conway. Uh, type of business being proposed, manufacture and cultivation. Is the zoning allowed by <coughs> right? Yes, it is. Uh, rural residential is most of what this town is. Uh, do we need special kind of permits? Yes, we do. We need to get a special permit from the town, building permits for greenhouses, shipping containers, barn renovations, and um, also from the Board of Health. Uh, local licensing. Uh, yes, there is Conway uh, Zoning Bylaw 11, which we have copies here available, uh, and we're going to have to be in strict compliance with that. Uh, there's also health regulations uh, from the town that we have. I have brought some copies as well. I think they're uh, stapled together with the, the bylaw. Uh, the health regulations seem to pertain mostly to retail 
sales. Um, does the location comply with the 500 foot buffer zone for public or private schools? Absolutely, yes. Um, does that include, like, part of the, like, there's the main pole and bus route? How does that, like, interact with that? A bus route? Like, one of the three main bus routes for Conway Grammar School and Frontiers Main Pole? I don't think there's anything the about, about that, but the, the bus doesn't stop anywhere near and it would go. I think it goes up North Poland. Actually. North yeah. Poland. Um, but yeah, we could talk about that yeah. more later. Uh, there's a, a, they want us to talk about how we're going to prevent diversion to minors. Well, first of all, we aren't, we aren't proposing retail. Um, however, our location is isolated and will be fully compliant with all security um, with all of the security uh, mandates from the CCC and the bylaws. Uh, we have detailed operational, we will have detailed operational procedures for tracking inventory and sales as issued by the CCC. This is again a heavily regulated industry. Um, but also our products are being developed for the adult use recreational market. So labeling and packaging uh, should emphasize emphasize artisanal craft cannabis cultivation and manufacturing processes and target conscious consumer markets interested in sourcing local organic boutique and low impact products. So I would compare that, say, fine wine to like wine coolers. Uh, we're going to be interested in producing fine wine. Uh, Security compliance. We take security compliance very seriously, and that is one of the main reasons we are going to be taking on early uh, investor capital. Uh, we plan to be in strict compliance with CMR 935, and we'll most likely need to solicit competitive bids from security companies for integrated security systems. Uh, information on nuisance and environmental impacts. Um, lighting, again, we don't anticipate uh, any issues with lighting, we're quite aware of concerns with that, not just regarding neighbors, but also wildlife, uh, um, nocturnal kind of cycles. Um, as far as noise, that was asked to be addressed. There's not going to be any noise produced by this facility of any appreciable amount. Um, odor. Uh, so. There's been a lot uh, in the news, I think, about issues with marijuana farms and odor. Um, I think our site is really well suited to mitigating that. It's a depression. Um, the prevailing winds actually blow away uh, from neighbors. Um, I don't know if I included in it in here, but I have... Um, a wind rose diagram that shows where the prevailing winds are. I'll be submitting that. Um, there's the forest uh, kind of as a buffer, uh, typically with uh, businesses like uh, poultry. Uh, poultry industry will often plant buffers of trees around their the perimeter of their operations, and um, that's uh, a very effective means of filtration and odor control. Uh, beyond that, it's a pretty limited growing season. The time when the plants will be in flower, it's not like California. Um, also in California, and a lot of these places where we're hearing about odor <coughs> control issues, um, in addition to it being year-round cultivation, uh, California doesn't quite have walls of deciduous trees between you and your neighbors. Um, so I think that's a really key distinction. I just wanted to um, maybe talk a little bit more about this issue of odor. And I guess um, some of my reservations are really around the adolescents who are living in the town of Conway and sort of this normalization of marijuana as just, you know, everybody's doing it, it's all okay. And so I think the odor issue is another way if our kids a lot of our kids are in the woods and playing, um, 
you know, they're up and down the roads. And so it's just another, I mean, now there's a lot of local um, people just growing too. And so even within these forested areas, you go by people's property and it's like, there's the pot. Like, it's just right there. You can really smell it. So you're so saying it is, you think that the smell will in, impact uh, adolescent marijuana consumption? I'm just, I'm, it's a concern. It's one more thing that's saying, here's marijuana, it's just out there. And so it's a concern that, um, you know, if there's a lot of odor um, that's going to be present, that, you know. So you're, you're, you're saying that there's probably not going to be a lot of odor, but I think it's, I think it's, you know, a potential issue. It's definitely a potential issue. I would, I would pinpoint odors probably the, the area that's going to be of most concern seems to be coming up a lot. Um, but let's, let's talk about that a lot more as soon as I'm done with all these points. But I think that yeah, we should definitely of biking, but There are a lot of usage in your area of mountain biking. There are a lot of our team population that is in and around your property just saying that. But also, in terms of security, I do have some more you know, questions about security as well. So I don't know if this is a time to talk yeah. about let, let me just get through the highlights, and then um, then we'll, we'll really dive into the, uh, the details. Um, again, with water usage, I think I dealt with that. We'll be quite effective in our management of water usage and our property is quite resource um, rich for, for water. Um, traffic, again, this isn't retail. Uh, there's not going to be any appreciable increase in, in traffic. Um, I addressed the mesa, the wood turtle issue. Um, energy use, again, this is relatively speaking compared to most proposals, this is about as low energy use as you're going to see. Um, I think that's the, the main nuisance issues. Obviously, any other nuisance issues, uh, this, is, this is really a good time to, to get into that. Um, and then uh, a plan, uh, we need to have a plan for how the marijuana establishment will positively impact the community. So obviously, the most important way it's going to impact the community is it can create uh, a tax revenue base. Um, and hopefully, uh, if all goes well, a pretty significant yeah. revenue base. Um, and I'm all about that, I'm very supportive of that. Um, it's a good thing. Uh, Conway definitely needs more local businesses, and um, by bringing uh, a business of reasonable scale and, a bit and, and ambition to Conway, we're trying to be kind of like Goldilocks, um, not too big, not too small. Uh, Hopefully, we can um, serve as a model for other people in the community who might uh, be interested. Um, also, Conway is very heavily dependent on uh, property taxes, and I think it would be great to alleviate that with more business. So by being first in line, I think we can help serve as a blueprint in particular for small farmers in the community interested in the cash crop. Uh, I think there's a general uh, possibility for synergy with the agricultural community here. Um, yeah, uh, there's a, uh, benefits of having an integrated business with cultivation and manufacture because it allows us to remain competitive in a rapidly changing and developing market. Uh, by allowing us to focus on outdoor and low impact growing methods, uh, we can provide kind of a level of support for feast or famine outdoor climates um, because manufacturing uh, utilizes, uh, utilizes cosmetically damaged flowers and less attractive kind of product. So, um, in other words, what I'm saying is by having the manufacturing and the cultivation, we're kind of sending a message like we're here to stay, we're here to try and make a real product, um, we're not just here for the quick boom and bust cycle. Um, there will certainly be a boost to the local labor market, uh, including uh, the need for contractors, 
skilled tradespeople and agricultural workers. Uh, I've been meeting with Suki Kendwal from OESCO about um, possible interests uh, or synergies between their business and ours, uh, in particular looking at, because uh, they do their cider pressing equipment, so talking to them about whether they're, they're interested in um, developing other kinds of presses. Um, and again, I would compare what we're doing maybe to like, say, a microbrewery. So there's a lot of branding and possibility for small, locally focused group, uh, growth within Conway if the business is, is successful. We can manufacture product from other farmers. Um, further down the road, there may be opportunities for a uh, cannabis cafe, things like that, uh, that really kind of feature uh, a local product and appeal to um, tourists and things like that. Um, and then lastly, uh, yeah, lastly, I think uh, what we're trying to do is a it represents a, a continuity of use of our property for agriculture. It, pre it preserves the character and functionality of the property as a small farm in sight of agricultural innovation. Um, as, as I pointed out before, uh, Dr. Ronald Procopi had his apple orchards and integrated pest management um, work done there. Uh, there was Tuckaway Farms, and then Elise Reimer most recently maintained a vineyard on, on the property. Uh, so this allows us, uh, doing this allows us to generate the capital necessary to maintain the property uh, so that it can function as a small farm into the future. Uh, repairing and renovating the barns, the fence lines, construction of a high-quality commercial greenhouses, greenhouse and irrigation systems. These are all improvements to the property that could well outlive uh, it being a uh, cannabis uh, um, establishment. Um, Okay, we're supposed to reiterate that uh, we're taking steps or assurances on measures taken to be compliant with all bylaws, state laws, and uh, Cannabis Control Commission regulations. Um, so I point out we have been active participa participants in the town's regulatory efforts. We've attended various committee meetings to try and learn and give input on the regulatory process. We've been in communication with uh, Mass Endangered Species Act. Mass Wildlife Conservation Commission, including the regional office, the planning board, etc. Um, we have Tom Lesser uh, on retainer as a local lawyer and legalization advocate. Um, he's our, he'll be our representative uh, in negotiations with the town. Uh, we're using Bridge West CPAs, which is one of the leading tax and regulatory compliance firms in the country, specializing in both medical and recreational marijuana, and. Additionally, we're going to make use of um, the kind of the rapidly maturing uh, legal cannabis business in, in ecosystem um, that provides extensive support for businesses in need of strict, strict in compliance, and that includes things like packaging. Um, Lastly, I guess, is there any questions about variances that we might need um, for the business? Uh, there may be a request for a variance required to use our existing structures, a variance for one of the barns, which is located very close to the road. Um, but we think that variance would be attractive to the town, and we're, we're pretty flexible regarding this. Um, beyond that, I can't really at this point say what other variances would be needed. Um, that will be revealed, I'm sure, through the special permitting process, but we're pretty confident that um, we won't need too many variances, if, if any. Um, I think that's it. So, you ready for questions? Let's open it up for questions, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but, uh, you've been very thorough and brought this to us early, and I'd like to thank you for that. Um, I'm interested in site planning issues, and uh, you have not mentioned anything about how your product will 
be transported off the property and your supplies are brought in. Could you talk a little bit about yeah. traffic and trucking Thank and that you. sort yeah. of stuff? Um, so there's pretty detailed compliance for um, having a vehicle that's licensed to transport, um, including secure storage, GPS tracking, and things like that uh, to prevent diversion and product. Uh, as far as, is your question like how the size of the vehicles? That what we kind of traffic will it be generating? Right. I can't imagine it generating, and I mean, it's a pretty small product, you know, um, you're talking about a delivery van or a vehicle. Small box truck or something? Not even. <laughs> oh, okay. Not even, yeah. Right. So um, and how often? I can't, I, I don't know what the market conditions are going to be. Um, but we're going to be supplying in bulk, and we're a pretty small operation. So, hopefully, just a few few places will take most of our product, and that'll be it. So I wouldn't imagine um, it being noticeable. Like, there won't be daily. It would be like a daily UPS truck. And and thought about what the route will be, whether it's going to be North Poland Road or on the dirt road that connects you to the covered bridge. I hadn't thought about that. Could you provide some su suggestions? Well, it's just the ladder, the connection to the bridge, being a dirt road and narrow and Poland Gate, as you know. Right. So you would suggest using the North Pole? Well, I, I, I know from the Procopies that their kids caught the bus that went on North Poland Road. They went down to the intersection, or Four Corners, or whatever you call it. Okay. And instead of a much shorter route, which is to the, to, uh, the bridge on 116, because of the dirt road conditions. Can be pretty rough in the wind. Mm. <laughs> so so the, the buses go off the road over there too. Sure. Hopefully, yeah, we, cer we certainly go. <laughs> we certainly take North Poland Road when the weather conditions are yeah. bad. And there are more neighbors on North Poland Road who might be concerned about the traffic than the neighbors, even though some of them are here on the the other the other end. When there's also the way that goes toward Williamsburg. Yeah. So there's three different ways. Out, yes, at right. least. Mm -hmm. All right. so, yeah. so, but yeah, I mean, in in general terms, not not even daily. Um, after the vehicles will be similar to vehicles already using the road for residential and farming. So, are, are you going to be taking your product out in the van or, or various people going to be coming to your We're allowed to, it depends on how cash strapped we are by the end of this process um, mm -hmm. to, 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 to Cause it seems to have me a vehicle that, that's compliant. That if you were doing it, then you would know what the conditions were, but other people from who knows where. Right. Um, I mean, for instance, just the other day, uh, a guy who lives in Leverett, uh, didn't come to us. He canceled a meeting with us in Conway because he figured he would need four-wheel drive to get here. You know, <laughs> which he wouldn't have needed. Right. Mm -hmm. It certainly helps. Depends on the day. But the transport license is a separate license. Mm -hmm. But we're allowed to. We're allowed to trans. Yeah, but we're allowed to transport our own product, mm -hmm. provided that you have the the vehicle. But we're going to be busy farming. Well, hopefully. Right. Yeah. No. Hopefully. To, to be, but uh, that that's to be determined exactly how the transport happens. It's certainly within our ability, and if the town would like us to be responsible for the transportation um, and in control of all aspects of that, that's certainly something we could deliver. And, and this would be year-round or just seasonal or what? It would hopefully be, <coughs> I, I would assume it would be year-round, but more activity, of course, coming around the harvest, the bigger harvest periods for us, which would be uh, mid-fall. I have a question about the product. 
Um, you're talking about, I thought, hash, Bubble hash. And, and marijuana or whatever. I don't know how you designate all these things. We're two different things. They are different. It's a, it's a concentrate. The hash would be a concentrate from, from marijuana, the marijuana flour, product, which is processed. Oh, okay. I thought it was just two different things all together. I don't know. <laughs> don't know much about it. Will you be hiring the staff? Will you be having workers? Will you have, or is this just the two of you? Hopefully, um, there will be opportunity to, to bring on some additional employment, whether it's full-time or seasonal. Seasonal remains to be determined, but certainly with the, the, the scale and the scope of the proposal right now that we're making, there would be some opportunity for it. Most likely it would be seasonal initially, and then as we grow, hopefully we could afford to take on employees. Mm -hmm. Well, Natural Roots hires um, temporary interns right. that help them. Right. Uh, so would that be something like that? No, I'd prefer to pay a, a, a salary and not do interns. Okay. Uh, will, will there be any signage on the property? Uh, advertising? Or just a, any kind of sign. That identifies the, the location. Um, will it say Tornado Mountain or something, something like that? Something like that, yes. Yeah. Um, we are allowed to, yes. uh, whether the town wants us to or not, yes. I think. We're not trying to be a place that's attracting mm -hmm. attention, so yeah. there's no reason. There's currently a sign that says Tuckaway Farm. Yeah, we so might yeah. keep that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that. We like it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Other questions? I'm curious if other growers have experienced any issues with crime or violence. Um, I know many years ago, and this is when you know marijuana was illegal, but there were a lot of local growers um, in the area, and there were some really significant um, instances of very violent crime um, where people were held at gunpoint and things like that. And so, you know, I just have to ask the question, I mean, is, you know, if there were some unintended consequences, you know, how would we manage that as a town? Um, and also, and maybe that's thinking too far down, but it has, happened in the past, um, that's when, you know, it was more, Ill it, w it was illegal then. So I don't know if that sort of impacted. I mean, I think any time you have a, a valuable commodity that there's going to be certain risks like that um, associated with it. And it's certainly something we're quite concerned with. Um, Oh, so you're good. Well, you got to have it fenced. Get a couple of uh, junk yard dogs. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> um, there's actually better um, livestock guard animals we could use. I mean, <laughs> those. Well, look, yes. that, those, that creates liability. Yeah, right. That creates liability yeah. concerns having animals, and I certainly don't want to have to put down a dog that that yeah. bites an intruder. Yeah. Right. Um, That's a good point. So I thought intruders. But I don't know what to say other than it's about managing risk, not about eliminating eliminating risk. There's certain things you can't ever get to zero. Um, the uh, the security requirements are quite robust, uh, as mandated by both the town and the CCC. I, heard, I read a little bit about the security requirements, and I envisioned something looking rather like a prison, <laughs> right. but with including Klieg lights and all the rest. But and you, you showed a picture in your packet of, you know, a green mesh fence that I should think would be quite vulnerable, or you know, somebody. Could That's yeah. yeah. The, the fencing would be more robust than that. Than what was shown. That was just more to show the the, the grow bags oh, okay. placed on on ground without any kind of um, impact. Okay. 
impact. So is it going to look like a prison? It's not going to look like a prison. Um, from what I can gather from, and again, we're, we're all in uncharted territory here to some degree, from what I can gather from the, uh, the law, um, we can have uh, six foot tall uh, field fencing, and then we can put privacy, privacy screening around that, and then we can have normal agricultural kinds of gates that are padlocked. So, not beautiful, but not like a prison. Okay. No barbed wire. No barbed wire. I think we're, we, we, where possible, we will look to more technologically sophisticated means of um, protecting the crossroad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Cannabis Cafe someday. Did you, did you say that? I, I mentioned that that, that could be uh, a benefit to the town. At your place? No. No, no, no. If someone, it's not <laughs> even legal yet to do that. But if Maybe someone, if retire. another business wanted to have such a business, that yeah. it would be, you know, we could feed yeah. into that um, their supply. Okay, but not at that location. No, no. I don't yeah, think we would get yeah. my, my, uh, much. Because now we're talking about trail <laughs> traffic. <laughs> we could do yeah. weed B and B. Also, it's not legal yet. Um, you mentioned. Uh, Organic production several times, and uh, I appreciate your 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 mention of Omri listed products. Uh, I used to work in in the field uh, in in the uh, in the organic area in the organic world, and um, I, I did also notice that you hedged your your uh, your uh, your statements a little bit. Um, I would encourage you of course, to meet the national organic standards, as I would anybody using the term organic, which, of course, is a regulated term. And um, if, you're, if you're not going to, I would encourage you not to use the term. I, um, why? And, and I understand that, that it's, it's not possible to be certified at this time. But um, just in order to clarify things for people. Is what, where would you say there was hedging? You said you, if, if it were necessary to use something. Um. No, no I, I, that, I must have mis misspoke. Um, no, there's no, no intention to do anything but um, strict compliance. Is that when he was talking about insect netting? Yes. Oh. He kind of mumbled that. Sorry. Oh, okay. He said uh, netting. Or things get really bad. You, you throw can, some you insect netting. netting. Oh, oh, okay. Which is yeah. organic. Yeah. No. And, and um, uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct, um, Aphids might be a problem for you as well as downy mildew if you're outside. So, right. Um, good luck. No, I, I'm well aware <laughs> of the challenges. Um, yeah, and and you're also right to point out that this um, organic isn't really certified at the state level, um, but for some reason they or, include you, they they include provisions for being an organic cultivator in the. Um, in 935 CMR, so we're going to roll with that. And it would, and as um, if it does become uh, federally legal, then I think you'd be well positioned, right, as a business. Right. More questions? I think we want to get back to the odor question, right? So just just about the the. Traffic thing. This, for, from being on the school committee too, the the the, the grid code does not will not send a school bus up Main Poland Road anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the kids that live there get get the uh, the mini bus uh, thing. So I, I it's it's just probably a good idea, just especially for the bigger trucks. The, uh, initially, that you're going to be getting some big trucks coming there. Um, right. You should just have them go North Poland Road. It's paved, and they won't get in trouble. Um, or up from Williamsburg. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, yeah, I should clarify, of course, we want, if we get permission to put up the large greenhouse and things like that, that will be a... That will be a construction project. That will be a construction project. That will be, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think you two are delightful, and you're, this is good, good public speaking skills, and uh, I'm, I'm impressed, so... I don't, um, I just hope I, I hope that the sweet spot includes you just being successful enough that 
it's an ongoing concern, and uh, but not successful enough that a, the out-of-state hedge fund comes in and writes you a big check. So. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Sure, sure. Can sure. <laughs> you talk a little bit about the, your, your business model and financing and things like that? Sure. Um, as a, as in terms of like our, what we're targeting is capitalization levels. Or Are you an LLC? Um, so um, we will be, there will probably be multiple LLCs involved in the. In, in the process. Um, right now we're looking at having a separate manufacturing and a separate cultivation LLC. Um, are, they, are they separately accounted for or will it be separate financing for them? Yes, there, there could be. This is something we're in dialogue with, our, with, with Bridge West about because there's a number of ways to do it and we're not actually, um, we haven't quite decided yet whether it will be one um, one LLC doing the uh, cultivation and the manufacturing, or we can split that into two. And can you talk a little bit about your progress in capitalization? Sure. Um, right now, uh, we have about um, four hundred thousand dollars in um, uh, capital pledged to the project. Um, we're hoping to do it for as little as possible, of course, um, but also because that means we're less uh, beholden to our investors and more accountable to the town, actually. Um, finding investor <coughs> capital for projects like these is, isn't proving particularly challenging. It's more about finding the right people at this point. Um, and to that extent, um, yeah, we we think um, we think keeping it small and kind of close with family and friends is probably the best best approach. I just want to make sure about this. Now, the, the part of that we're here at on the main corner was the dirt section. Do you see a need to ask the town to improve that for you? <laughs> I hope we make enough money for the town that if we do, that's not going to be an issue. But no, I, I really don't right now. This is. I, mean, I think a lot of us like it the way it is. Yeah, yeah us I, too. I like it the way it is. Okay. Yeah. Personally. It does yeah. make my back wind. No, I don't live there, but I like it the way it is. <laughs> do you have any residential abutters? No. 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 So to me, it's like a perfect place yeah. for something like this. Yeah, it does seem like it. Yeah. Well, you, you, if I'm not mistaken, the Procopies, one of their kids, bought the lot. It was broken off oh. like a five-acre lot right next to the farm. So I don't know if that would be an issue at some point. There's no, um, there, there is land that's, um, I, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's, it's permanently um, conservation oh. land. Yeah. And that's owned by maybe not the state, but... It's yeah. friendly land trust, perhaps. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a big wildlife uh, preservation area behind you, or whatever it's called exactly. It's Massachusetts. Oh. Yeah, the Mass Wildlife. Yeah. We don't have anybody here from them, right? No. No, have you talked with them? No, I'm wondering about how they're Yeah. So I sent a letter off to their main offices, but I also called the local office and spoke to spoke to the person who's responsible. And they, they said they would probably send someone to me. Can I ask why you held this on Saturday night? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, because uh, I hadn't been aware that the town had um, passed uh, a host agreement uh, uh, negotiating kind of uh, article. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when I did find out about it, I was like, "Oh, well, we're ready. We're ready to fire." So I just did it that day. Mm -hmm. um, that was the soonest. It's, a, it's quite soonest. a pressing matter for us because if we don't get um, license before at some point this spring, then our whole year is gone as far as cultivation is concerned. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was under the impression that it's about a year from the time you applied with CCC to licensure. 
They're it claiming it they're claiming be. it's if you have everything done that they can get you through in three months. Hmm. It was longer in the beginning. I'm not time. optimistic, but <laughs> you're going for it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what is the CTC in Canada or something or other? Uh, Canada's Canada's Canada. 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 Oh. oh, CCC. C-C-C. Oh, I thought that middle letter was a T. Sorry. Theory. So, there any other questions? There will be a planning board hearing, no doubt. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> There's a lot of regulatory regulatory. Programs. So this meets one of the obligations. This is the this is the first. The very so the conservation commission, the planning board, and all of that. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The select board will be negotiating the community host agreement over the next period of time, starting Monday night. Good. Which are public meetings if anybody wants to attend. Thank you. <laughs> They're really fun. <laughs> yes. See? Thank you. We try to go to as many as we can. See? Oh, this is our entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, just to cycle it in here in time. I, I think this should be done during a, a, a weeknight, though, in the future. I, I think Saturday night's kind of a tough night for many people. Mm-hmm. It's way off people's radar for one time. Yeah. yeah. But you could also argue that it's better. <laughs> you I mean, could, you're, we're but. in a in a bedroom community where people yeah. commute, right? Really out of town. Yeah. So the weekend may be the best opportunity. I know. I think most. Not if you have You may well be right, right, I think most people think of planning board meetings and that type of thing as a Monday, yeah. Tuesday. Uh, it's you know. Well, we're flexible. Yeah. Yeah. So. It already happened, but yeah. I. I, <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> like no. <laughs> Um, forward awareness or maybe, you know, signs up at the post office place where people go with a certain frequency because I happen to be at Duncan and poked through my newspaper was just reading through waiting for something yeah, and that's the yeah. first time I was yeah. even aware just and it's just well, right. it's I, will, I will say we've tried to make I'm just saying I wasn't even aware all like at all yeah. and I'd seem all like I'm fairly yeah. far behind yeah. in the process here and I, you know, mm-hmm. we just went to Frontier and I hope you know and what kids are doing with cannabis and all this jazz. Mm-hmm. So it's like, whoa. And then tomorrow night at 6.30, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, that would be perfect, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just sort of a hot week, and that might be more internal Yeah, it's but hard. For the town, about how, how we You're just not it. expecting it on a Saturday night. Like, we were, uh, we were convinced that it was a misprint. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was, too. So most of our meetings were like, oh, Tuesday nights. <laughs> And then you started walking down the street. But we, it's here. definitely off the radar. Didn't see any cars yeah. and stuff until we rounded the corner. I'm not sure. Yeah. We can do weeknight. We Tuesday night, nights, Thursday night. People have multiple nights. Cover them all. Yeah. That's fine. Well, the, the other hearings, if it's planning board, they're the ones that arrange the meetings, and it won't mm-hmm. be on a Saturday. Night. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And, and just to reiterate, there's going to be a lot more okay. steps in this process and a lot okay. more opportunity for people to come and, and do to feedback, and from what I've seen, this is a pretty transparent town as far as things like that are concerned. I just wanted to make a comment just about, um, and this isn't really, you know, about your operation in general. I mean, it seems like this is just a very small operation, and you've been very thoughtful so far in the planning. However, I do just want to say that I think with the legalization of marijuana, both for medical use and recreational use, that we are in a time, this is uncharted territory, and if you have children who are of adolescent age, I think it's a really scary time for us to be trying to navigate our children through how not to damage their developing brains when, you know, this marijuana is just coming in from all angles, and it's also the vaping as well. And so, you know, I just... I needed to say that because I think that, you know, while the criminalization of marijuana was not the way to go either, um, I also think that just it's becoming so normalized that kids just think it's okay. And if you're under 21, you permanently damage your brain. Your trajectory of where you're going 
um, in your life is going to be different if you really start getting into marijuana and other drugs as well. And so I just couldn't leave this meeting without having said that. <laughs> so. Amen. That's Thank right. you. I just came back from meeting too, looking at, we were looking at brain. I, the neurology is my ballywick, so looking at brain development and up to age 25, actually, which is 21, um, it's a huge it's a huge concern that what we're where we're going as a community. And like I said, I, I appreciate your thoughtfulness and, and whatnot too, but I, I have some more concerns. And I think I agree. And one of the one of the challenges is that there's not a lot of neutral <coughs> scientific work that's been done up to date uh, on this. And hopefully, I beg to differ on that, but we could talk about that. Okay. okay. I'm going to put in there because. With the legalization of marijuana, and it was becoming more blatantly, you know, used. I wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea to have a responsible, respective sort of way that that's coming out in the community. You know, like they obviously care very much about what they do. I don't know. I'm just wondering if that's another side to it. That if kids see, oh, this can be done in a correct, responsible way, then maybe that's another symbol. Because the recreation use won't go away. Uh, no, no, it gives, you know, yeah, our I was lessons just saying that are our lessons, better. right? Their, their, frontal, their brains are not developed, and they do very risky yeah. things. That's what well, you do with your adolescents. They're literally just, so just growing brain the hormones. It's literally disconnecting and reconnecting, and it is a hugely vulnerable time. I think part of yeah. doing it in a responsible way is not doing it. When you're young. Exactly. Yeah, we, we exactly. certainly agree with the fact that they want to be legal for people under age 21. I don't, it, I don't <laughs> take issue with that, but I think, and I was speaking with Lori earlier, is a lot of these kids have it very available because it is normal, you know, it's normalized. So mom and dad and these kids meant, not me, I'm a little older, but a lot of these kids have 35-year-old, 40-year-old parents, and there's a lot of them who are, have these products rather readily available in their home, and these kids are... You and the statistics, we just went to the thing at Frontier. It's, it is alarming what's going on. Oh, I believe that, yeah. I wasn't arguing that. Part. And some of it is because it's so easy for them to access it because it's legal for their parents to have it. And so there's issues around that are, you know, above and beyond. Well, I, I, I actually think it's easier to have the health discussion now that it's not illegal because before the discussion was about it being legal or not. And that yeah, adds the forbidden the fruit aspect to yeah, it. I'm, I'm not, now I think it's actually easier, okay. I hope, to have the health discussion. I, I think it needs, that, that's my thing, is that we, as a community, embrace the health aspects that I think are really huge for, our, you know, the next, you know, not be typical Americans and look at the two to three year, but look at the 10 to 20 year they scope are, and stuff like but that. But I think you also have to recognize that too. there's been years in the Sanford Valley that we raised tobacco. Oh yeah, that's similar. I, um, and yet, there was no problem with, there were no constraints that you have, that you're going through now. Um, but there's a difference between raising it and using and selling it. Well, you raise it to... <laughs> you do, but it's like, you know, there's opiates. There's, there's, there's medicinal purposes right. of this as well. Oh, yeah, no. I'm not, I'm I don't. Tobacco, I'm not so sure. But certainly marijuana has some other applications as well. Yeah. So raising it, to me, shouldn't be, um, it should be distinguished with from using and selling and doing those yeah. other I just things. think that's we need to be I'm just raising awareness. No, absolutely. We need to be thoughtful approach as a community. No, I think you have to be in the dialogue. It should be in the dialogue. But rather, I, rather I condoning that it's right. totally you know, I think it's important for businesses to be receptive of these dialogues and you know talk about ways that we might be able to give back and help with this issue. Because um, our kids think we're nuts. I mean, in terms of what we're saying, there's conflictually. I mean, the feedback <laughs> when they're just. I mean, absolutely. Just well, in terms Michael, of like the messages are very mixed, and I think that we have a proliferated too. I, I, I don't. You know, I'm, I'm not saying. saying I'm not saying any not, one thing. I'm just yeah. saying as a health, as a community, it should be addressed. It's a I piece of our health as a community. It should be part of the whole process that it has to be distinguished. As to, this is a condoning. This is a product that can be used for. It can be used or abused, really. 
itself to say INSA or NIDA, you're trying to sell this stuff to who? Okay, so um, there is certainly a market uh, for concentrates in different forms. So that's all you'd be selling is concentrate? That's no, no, we'll also the flour, but okay. I think... Um, but to the same people, the dispensaries carry all of these things. Yeah. If, yeah, if you go to a dispensary, there's a, a, an assortment of different concentrates as well as flowers that you can get. But if and you want, if you want to geek out on the on on all of the those kinds of things, I, I, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. No, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just trying to figure out exactly where that fits in. This yeah, way. no, there's a lot of interesting research going on right now on concentrates and and issues with them because they don't capture the full. Um, uh, range of chemicals yeah, that, that's, that's in the flower and the entourage effect is like if you want to get into the full like okay what are the medicinal aspects what are the the full effects of this product um, a lot of the manufacturing and, and uh, processes right now uh, remove a lot of the elements that contain a lot of promising um, research and again it's the complex interaction of all the substances together a uh, question about the um, sort of THC concentration levels of the marijuana that's being produced and sold. Is there any sort of regulation on that in terms of, you know, once at the retail end? Um, so what you cultivate and manufacture and then how that gets to the retailers, do they require? Not yet, but I think there should be. And I think, I think um, taxation of products should also be maybe considered to be in relationship the concentration of it. So well, does the FDA regulate any of that at the retail level? I don't, I don't understand what you said. Taxation should be in relation to concentration. How strong? <laughs> Sounds good, right? Maybe one of the stronger. There's more, I mean, there's a lot more product that goes into it. There's also um, subsections of the market that's not just medical or recreational. There's gray areas within there. And, and, some people prefer a less uh, a less intensive kind of experience, and if, if you ask me, um, and if you're concerned about uh, these products, that that for sure there should be some regu regulatory distinctions between. But so, but you're saying that now there's no now regulation there's on the THC, and is that just from you to the retailer, or that's also from like the retailer to I think the just consumer? across the board? But I, I would imagine. But they that. relabel the THC content. <clears throat> yeah, the contents has the, to be labeled. It needs to be tested and labeled for how much THC is in it, as well as CBD. Yes. But there's no cap, like, of, it, they don't say it can only be 80% or anything <laughs> like that. I was just the I'm consumer, about the consumer how knows when the consumer know. knows it's labeled with yeah. the, the content of um, how much, how many milligrams, and then how high. The but you know how like is. beer and vodka have different yeah, yeah. regulations. Yeah, it's there's, like that. There's not no. There's no regulatory. Oh, we're saying different things. <laughs> I would hope. Yeah. Taxation. You mentioned how does how does taxation come into it? The value of your property. So the the town has to assess. We're already paying taxes the, on that. Yeah, right, right. So I didn't know how it benefited. You mentioned how it was going to benefit the town tax-wise. Oh, but right. then right. There's, there's so many different so taxes. There's federal the state. town gets a cut of our gross revenue. Oh, okay. Or can. Can, right. And, and there's, there's, there's a lot of, that. there's, there's okay. different guidance on that, but uh, in theory the town can um, request up to 3%. Okay. Um, Your product will go to a testing lab, and then you market it to a wholesaler or retailer. Retailer. Or you don't yeah. retail out of your property. No. Okay, so that is where the 
taxes probably are on the retail. Assist. But that doesn't come down. No, but there's town. a town. The town can can yes. tax any marijuana uh, or cannabis establishment. Right. We don't. We're not paying sales tax, but we're paying a lot of other taxes. Mm -hmm. So the better they do, the better the town does. So we're, we're, what, what, what kind of tax is that? What is the sales, sales, sales tax? tax on the town level at three percent? At the right level, it goes right to the town, not correct. through the state. And correct. The correct. Sales tax. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's one of the. Only new sources of revenue granted to towns in the past hundred years. Oh. <laughs> and what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Which is also on the Um so we're that yeah, we're negotiating these that and they're not gonna let us get away with not <laughs> Well the, the the sales part is is set in stone at this point. Right. But doesn't the town get a share of that? Or the the town gets So that's another just, kind of Secondary of source sales. of tax, right. sales tax, right? right? The town gets three percent of their sales. Oh, okay. <clears throat> right. right. I said it wasn't a sales tax, but it is. I was thinking just revenue, but because you think of retail, gross revenue, right? Gross revenue. I think one other really okay. important point yeah. about Philip and Leah is that because I'm, I'm in the industry as well, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here, other than I'm just kind of let's face it. But um, the problem in this industry right now is the majority of the people who are in it, which you probably will all understand, I'm not one of these people, and clearly they are not either. It's all about money. Money, 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 money. How, how fast can we make money? And what that's doing is people are farming incredibly large amounts of land and they are soaking those plants in pesticides because they want a bigger yield and they don't care. So what happens is the end user ingests the pesticides, the pesticides go into the ground. I do understand that organically you can, and I, I'm not even asking you to respond to this because I don't know how it works on your end, but with any organic crop you are allowed a certain amount of a certain type of pesticide, but it's nowhere near what soaked crops of other non-organic or uh, conventional food products contain. So the fact that they're going out on a limb and doing this organically is not only risky because you will risk losing your entire crop to so many different things, as you know, not to put that out there, but you know, we it can know. happen. But the, the, the end product is the natural plant, and that plant is so invaluable medicinally. I have treated cancer, I have treated MS, I have treated COPD, I have treated lung cancer, I have treated um, many things, anxiety, depression, for several people, and the results of that are astounding, and I will only treat with organic um, marijuana. It's, there's nothing like it in the entire world. Anywhere where uh, medical and rec have been legalized nationwide, they have shown an overall decrease in opiate um, overdoses at 25%. That is not a small number. I think, uh, and I know I don't really have a voice in Conway, forgive me if I'm overstepping, but if I were a resident of Conway, I would certainly be very proud to have an organic marijuana farm here, if all of the criteria is met, uh, because that's, it's unheard of nowadays. It's all about the money, and they're not, and that's why I want to support them. I don't even know them. I just met them two weeks ago, but I'm going to go through this process as well for other reasons, and um, I'm intrigued. So thank you for the presentation. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, yeah, of I course. One more quick question now. Yours is a, a living crop that is, uh, that is influenced by the vagaries of the weather, of the environment. So you can't say when you start out that you're going to end up with a 100% perfect mm -hmm. thing at the end, just like any farmer. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you are that. There are some. I mean, this is this is a living thing. You can be influenced by mold, by pests, by uh, tornado down the road. <laughs> Hopefully, not that won't happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, I mean, you have to keep that in mind too. I think, 
So it's not just that. It's that this is this is a regulated industry. So that, the, for instance, they cannot sell their product right now. They cannot sell their product out of state, um, unlike most agricultural products. And so uh, you might have seen the headlines now in Oregon. I think that there was the headline that the licensed growers in Oregon now have a one and a half million pound glut or surplus in warehouses. Um, and, and that that's you know so. So I think the, the, the addition of the manufacturing facility where you make stuff that doesn't have, that has a shelf life, unlike flowers, um, uh, makes, makes, makes the concern um, more able to weather. Adapt to be. Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. I think it increases your chance of success, but it's still, it's still a big bet. And I, you know, I'm grateful for the gamble on the town of Conway. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, um, you know, you, you're going to have to roll up your sleeve. Farmers, you don't get vacations, you don't get weekends. You... <laughs> yeah, 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 a little bit. January, you get a vacation. It's winter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not if you have an all season greenhouse. There you go. <laughs> so, there are strict controls on pesticides in medical marijuana. Do you know, uh, in Massachusetts, do you know if. That will apply to. to that research. also applies? Yeah, in general, uh, as far as pesticides, it's pretty, it's pretty strict. Um, <laughs> From the regular, uh, I'm, I think the more innovative area is going to be with, um, or not innovative, but the real difference is going to be in terms of the, the nutrients. Yeah, yeah. Sort of I was going to say if you're going to do any companion cropping or anything like that. Yeah, I mean that's one of the reasons I, I was I, I like the idea of having the larger area fenced off. Um, it, it gives me a chance to grow some other plants um, to mitigate pests, and to, to create um, biomass sources for, for composting, things like that. How, how easy is it for you or for someone you may sell it to, to convert this into a retail operation? Yeah. Could that happen? It could not happen. No. Our housing. I mean, yeah, I'm saying if you sold it to somebody. Well, that's a completely separate license. So oh, this is important, business. and this would, would, I think this will help people like you you can't just sell your business well they just looked up in Northampton what if they uh, oh, no. I mean that's on Indeed. such a epic well, they went public level so it's but, a little different but if you right. talk about like, yeah, they like they raised me like if I were to change by more than 10 percent these um, the uh, ownership structure of the business after we established ourselves uh, we'd have to go through the entire process again. If, but is there a wall between what you're going to do and retail? Retail. What, what do you mean a wall? About selling it. I mean, is it but you said it was no, a totally you can't different license. license. It's a different... It doesn't yes, give us right? any... Separate separate business. Business. It doesn't business. give us any right to do retail. No. Yeah, it's a separate license. We, separate we specifically license. cannot do retail. We can do wholesale with the licenses that I'm just we worried about down the road. Like you guys oh, we'd have to start over and get try to get so that. I mean, we would be allowed to hold a retail license, and that would be something that could happen somewhere else in the town. But I mean, that's. But we'd have to pursue that. Right. Yeah. Like the not same like time. a not like a dairy farmer who. So to buck it out and you can no, come in and get a little and drop some money in the bucket. Leave the money, take your eight and leave the fifty. Yeah. <laughs> no, we can't do that. Yeah. That's, that's right. specifically <laughs> prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, that's what that is prohibited. <laughs> Elementary. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just playing devil's advocate because I think that's an answer no, a lot of us would have. It's, I think it's like the, these two well, moms, I got teenage kids too, and I'm yeah. I, I'm all about let's keep this discreet. Let's mm -hmm. the discretions the. We would we yeah. value our privacy, and we we want yeah. that too. Yeah. Good. And and how much of of your uh, growth will be under glass, and how much summertime? So we're capped at ten thousand. And whether or not we even get approved for ten thousand is up to the town and a whole host of That's for greenhouse. That's for greenhouse. Okay. Ten thousand square feet. Yeah. Okay. So that's year round. That could potentially be year round. We could opt for three season greenhouses because of um, the energy usage during the winter and because we might want a vacation. So <laughs> is, is most of your growing gonna be done in the greenhouse and not outside? No, I'm hopeful that most will be done outside. Um, odor issues notwithstanding, because um, I think that's the, what our property is best equipped 
equipped for, and also the 10,000 square foot uh, footprint for a greenhouse is going to be pretty small compared to what other people are doing. So we'd be pretty limited in what, what we could do. And, and finally, because of the environmental impact, I just think the environmental impact of doing 100,000 square feet of intensively lighted indoor or greenhouse uh, canopy. Yeah, you have the proper area there. So these are the things you have to weigh when you're you're doing your business. Like, what are the, the, the costs and benefits to the community? And and I'm open to hear to you know the the planning board actually has discretion to approve. <coughs> they could approve a larger facility as a very vari variance, for example. But it, it's really about what's best for the town. We'd also like to thank Selectman Bob for taking his time to go down to FCAP, get the camera, oh, yeah. and show it show it on FCAP so that everybody in town will be able to see this in the comfort of their own living room starting. So this is not live on FCAT, but What's what that? we're recording will be processed and put up on the FCAT it's on YouTube. video on demand, which is through YouTube. FCAT's so YouTube FCAT has a YouTube channel. It's called FCAT Media. F C A T M E D I A. FCAT Media. And three or four days, they process the tape. They put a little FCAT thing on the front, and they upload it to YouTube. It'll also be on channel 12, channel 23, some of those channels. If you have Comcast. You can look at FCAT on channel 12. We have Comcast. Yeah. Not <laughs> yet. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Or? Do you have any more little copies? Well, I'm going gonna, gonna to ask for the draft proposals back. Bill, will that be up on our website? Should be. The what? I mean, those all look like nice electronic documents. Could we put them on the Town of Conway website? I I assume when we go in for the meeting on Monday, you guys will discuss how you want to do it. We will we will cooperate. Great. You want them all back? For now, yeah.